It's the first week back after the Christmas break for Tapatahi, and because it's an election year, we're scheduling catch-ups with all the major parties this week. To kick things off, we're looking at government response to areas of the country hardest hit by the severe thunderstorms and heavy rain, the Northland region, one of the worst affected. Nationals Dr Shane Reti, no Ngāpuhi, Ngāti Wai, Ngāti Hine, Ngāti Kura has been helping out with emergency services in Whangare over the weekend, and he's with us now. Tēnā koe, Dr Reti, thank you for joining us. Tēnā koe, Neo Rawa, ko te kapatai. How are you and your whānau coping with the wild weather that has hit the region? So uh, we're in the middle of it right here now. So I can see the wind outside, uh, the rain's whistling around. It doesn't look as bad as what we've seen in Auckland at the moment, but certainly Northland is, is getting its share as well. Uh, and for us here, some of the infrastructure that's hurting is, I think for the second time in this past three or four days, the pathway, the gateway into Northland has been closed. Mm. You could not get into Northland either through State Highway 1 over the Brent uh, or coming round um, through uh, Helensville, for example. The truck was across there and both okay. lanes were closed. Yeah. So you could not get in and out of, of Northland by road. So it, it, we've got infrastructure issues as well, just like Auckland has. But, you know, here in the north, we, we lift our chins up and, and we, we just do what we need to do. And the communities are wrapping around as they are in Northland. So uh, work to do, but we're still here, e hikoi tonu, still walking. Beautiful. Now, you were, I believe, with the ambulance crews over the weekend in Whangare as the rain continued to batter Auckland and Northland. Well, what's the experience been like for you? So uh, I'd scheduled two weeks ago to be on the ambulance on Friday night, the night when the rain really hit uh, here in Northland. And uh, several things, big shout out to our emergency services, fire, ambulance, uh, emergency departments. Uh, it, it was a busy night. You know, the, the ordinary journey of life continues uh, regardless of what the weather is doing. And so, uh, you know, we, we had people who'd fallen over and people who were struggling in their ordinary lives. And on top of that, we had wet roads, uh, the ambulances uh, couldn't get over the Brent Derwin, so Wellsford was out for us. We ended up sending an ambulance to Mungify to try and cover that southern part uh, of uh, Otamatia, and then we got a call out to Kaio. And so uh, a lot of work on the ambulances, and they really shuffle their resources as well as they can. Excellent equipment. Thank you to everyone who has donated the equipment that the ambulance services had. Uh, I saw the benefit of it uh, on Friday night. Big shout out to our teams. So what are some of the lessons uh, from this time working with the people in the north over this stormy weather? What are the, some of the lessons that you've picked up? I think some of the lessons are, are communication, communication. It's actually been reasonably good here in the north. People just want to know. Uh, they want to know what roads are up, what roads are down. Uh, they want to know what they do about their rubbish. They want to know what they do if their telephone is down. Mm. They want to know uh, what they do for emergency services. And, you know, you can tweet. Uh, you, you can tweet in, what, 10, 15 seconds just to keep people engaged. Communication goes uh, goes a long way. And then our, our underlying infrastructure. Uh, we've been blessed. Whangarei District Council uh, built a dam to protect the inner city. We'd have been washed out twice. That inner city could well have been washed out twice in the past six months if they hadn't built that, uh, that infrastructure to protect that. So we, we still have a lot of infrastructure to, to be built to give us more resilience, but standing up reasonably OK at the moment, just our roads are down. And uh, we just want to apologise very quickly for the, for the little picture that we, we have of you currently. Oh, there we go. It's just a connection issue, um, working through that. So you're exactly right. Uh, it's incredibly important to make sure that communication is key. People want to find out what's going on at all times. So are you comfortable with the government's response to the flooding that has hit many households and regions? Look, I, I think that's something that will be debriefed uh, over time. I, I think here at the moment, uh, it's more important to make sure people are safe, that they're warm, uh, that they have food, uh, that there is a plan for education, there is a plan for work. I think that's more important, what's in front of us here today. Uh, I think looking back, there'll be a brief, and then we need to take those learnings and make sure we can improve our response next time. And that should be what we should do with most emergency management scenarios. Uh, what happened? Uh, what did we do? What will we do different next time? I think it's that same sort of planning. Now, looking at what's happened in the Beehive over the last uh, few weeks, what are you expecting to see in the latest government reshuffle? Any shocks or surprises? Look, uh, that's the uh, privilege of the Prime Minister. Clearly, they're going to need to address the challenges that they have. 
uh, around three waters, uh, around health, around education, law and order. Goodness, I I'm identifying every portfolio. So I, I think they'll actually need to uh, triage it in, in some way and say, we've got challenges sort of everywhere we look. What are the most important cost of living? That's really hurting. Have we got the right person in the right place? Uh, law and order, that's really hurting. Right person, right place. So I think they'll be looking for fit for purpose people uh, and to, to improve the portfolios from where they are. Now, Chris Hipkins has been the PM for less than a week after Jacinda Ardern stepped down. With yesterday's polls showing a surge of support for Labour, do you think the country is simply giving him a fair shot? Or is there something more to it? Uh, look, there's always a bump uh, when you get a, a new leader. And uh, I'm a little surprised that bumper isn't more. But, uh, you know, good, good luck to Chris. Uh, he'll, he'll do the best job that he can, I'm sure of that. And uh, we'll see if that's something that resonates um, with New Zealanders. Uh, I'm interpreting that as, as a new leader bump. I'm just interesting it wasn't as much as we'd expected, but, uh, you know, good luck to him. And what were your thoughts on Jacinda stepping down at this time? Uh, I saw Willie Jackson come out of the retreat and say um, he was disappointed. Uh, I, I personally uh, was surprised, but, you know, all, all I'd say is thank you. Uh, this is a hard gig. Thank you for your service and, and wish you all the very best for the future. I think that's how that needs to be. Well, nicely said. Dr Shane Reti from the National Party, thank you so much for your time today and for the work you're doing in the North. Ngā mihi kia koe. Ngā kia pai tōra.